beauty of fall, a special time of year that holds immense beauty, meaning, and symbolism for us motorcyclists, and one of my favorite times of year to ride through the mountains. The fall represents change and transformation which we can feel and see in the beauty of our surroundings. The fall is also a reminder that our bodies and minds are always developing and changing as well. The uncertainty that comes with change reminds us to embrace the present and savor what we have before it's gone. It's also fitting to have Thanksgiving in the fall, which is a reminder for us to be thankful for what we have right here, right now. The fall also represents preservation and protection. In fact, autumn represents the preservation for life and its necessities. Animals prepare for the winter hibernation, gathering nuts and food. Farmers collect a reserve of crops. And as motorcyclists, we start to think of preparing our motorcycles for the winter break via winter rising and storage. It's also a time that makes me reflect on letting go. As temperatures and leaves drop in the nature, showing me to let go as the seasons change. Embracing change helps us lift and shift and shed the worrisome thoughts, just like the trees shed their leaves. This enables us to develop and grow as well, just like the leaves grow new leaves to nourish themselves through the spring and summer. The fall is truly a reflective season and a perfect time to go on a motorcycle ride, and in my case, a dual sport ride in the North Georgia and North Carolina mountains. We're at the fall foliage. At first, I thought it was going to be the foggy fall foliage 2022, but it's clearing up. A little bit of rain. Um, it's not raining in the morning. Yeah, it start, stopped raining, starting to clear up maybe a little bit. You can see the sun behind us. We've got Manuel from, from Spain, and we've got Nick de Britt, which was in that other video we did together at the Hoops, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to this. But uh, my goodness, it's hot, and I'm stuck here in Gore Tex gear because I thought it was going to be absolutely thundering it down. But um, so you're, we're looking forward to it. So you're Gore-Tex, that means you got to hit about 50 miles an hour going through the river. I think so, yeah. Okay, all right. That's the only way I'm going to cool down. M Manuel and I will go slow, we'll get on video, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Well, let's have a good ride, guys. Let's okay. have fun. Great you guys came right. out, and we'll, we'll have a good one. All right. Oh, hey, Glenn, get in here. Yeah, I, I know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> There's Keep doing the tips and tricks. Okay. Um, and there was something specific I wanted you to hit. I got to get this. Okay, so we're talking. I'm not saying it. We're cutting a couple <laughs> tips and tricks. I'll start with the easy one, hydrate, about a week before, right, yeah. which is a good point. And, um, with water. With, water. With, okay, water. a lot of water, water true, water, right? Especially, hydrate. like, wearing all this gear, you sweat a lot, yeah. right? Yeah. You got Gore-Tex. <laughs> so, all right. And then the other one is uh, anti-diarrhea pill, but that's a good point, right? Because, you know, uh, we got our nerves going, we're on the bike, we're shaking, we're getting wet. And last thing we want to do in the middle of the trail is have an emergency. We want we want the ride to be slick in the water, but not beyond that, right? So, <laughs> Okay. okay. Th those are good tips. Bring, if you're carrying a backpack, put a small half a roll of toilet paper yeah. in your backpack. That's a good point. You know what? Um, one of the last tips and tricks. There was a guy who had he had wipes in his box. And he goes, "Cause you never know." So that's yeah. a good point. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I hope you didn't jinx me today, because I don't have any of that. I got. I got to stop. We're going to the bathroom. Just go, man. <laughs> I took two pills. <laughs> if you need, need some, I've right, got some. Okay, all right, we'll look for the guy in the orange. All right, guys, we'll have fun ride today. All right, guys, let's do this. Let's go. Vamos! <laughs> Look 
this beauty. Wow, look at the colors. Woo. Ball for it, it's 2022, this is what it's all about. So this yeah, starts this starts the off-road section then. All right, all the colors, did you see that oh, early stunning. on? Stunning, with the um, valley and the, and the oh, river. Gorgeous, Absolutely and some of the stunning. mists and fog on the mountains. Right, do we want to let these down? Yeah, From the moment that we headed out on this ride, we were struck by the colors around us. And as we hit the off-road trails in the mountains, we were surrounded by a potpourri of fall colors on the floor and in the trees around us. And the further we proceeded into the mountains off these excluded roads, some of them close to single track roads, it really hits you that not many people get to see what we were seeing. The only way to access these parts of the mountains are with off-road vehicles, motorcycles, horseback, mountain bike, or hiking. And most people don't have access to those vehicles or the ability to hike the many miles required to hit some of the secluded spots that we hit in North Carolina and North Georgia. Less weight than lower seat. You're yeah. doing great back there. You're just, you know, on that bigger bike. So thing is, Mike, what you really need for this is what you've got: soft suspension, oh. 250, yeah. and uh, st uh, and low seat height. See the guy with the seven yeah. with yes. slip tires. Slip. Oh, he's on street. How good was it? <laughs> that was fun. All right, let's keep going. Yeah. So um, this this is Popcorn Road. This was the end of the ride last year. Yeah. And you know, after a long day, we're tired hitting this, oh, but it's worse now because of all the uh, rain. It was dry last year. Yeah. The rest of it, we got this other part that has some ruts, but it's wide, you have cars. This is probably the most single track-ish of and all of it. it's bad because the rocks. Yeah, the, the slippery and roots. And I put too much pressure in my tires. Yeah, I think PSI. I did. Yeah. And I've got 20 PSI. Yeah, I'm on 15. Yeah, you yeah. see. The problem is, is too much pressure, you're not getting any yeah, deflection. Yeah, you, you don't bite the, the rock, you just... It just, that's right, it just slides off it. Yeah. Yeah, you really need to, but the problem is you let the air out the tires and you, you know, you run eight PSI and you may get a... Then you, yeah. Rim lock, do you? Yes, I do, yeah, there are rim locks on it, yeah. All right. Our paved road is 17.6. I'm off my mileage, so... Okay, we'll I'll keep... take, I'll still take the lead. Okay, you're doing good, thank you.
Manuel, uh -huh. Appalachian Trail. Isn't that cool? Uh, it was, so that's the Appalachian Trail. People camp right off the sides here, yeah. So, Manuel, it goes all the way from, oh, Georgia, is it? Okay, so it starts at Georgia. It's 2,200 miles, something yeah, like that. Yeah, What's the name of that mountain that it starts at in Georgia? Springer. That's right, Springer Mountain. There's a waterfall there yeah. too, right? Right there, yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? Are you guys hiking it? They, they are, yeah. Oh, very cool. We do sections of it every year. Uh, what's your goal to complete it? Uh, 874. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I rode up Springer Mountain in that area with my brother-in-law. We met this guy that for four, over 40 years, he's been doing it from north to south, and he was on his final leg, and the whole family flew up to greet him. Oh, wow. It was really cool, yeah. Well, have fun. Enjoy. God, that's tall, that bike. Really? Yeah, I was like, gosh. That is tall. It came with a low ring link and I took it off. Mm. <laughs> it's the same switch gear You're as right. the Yamaha. Doing Where's a bike swap. Yeah. Okay, so we are on Appalachian Trail. What's up? Okay. Okay. Power sliding in the turn. Okay. Pipe banging. Yep. Clutch dumping, wheeling. Okay, that's the next level. Sliding all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So how do you? Awesome. Yeah, I've seen you go through water crossings. This guy's like, you know, big rooster tail girl coming off the bike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did it. Too. We oh, did you did? There. Yeah. yeah. We, we went in the river together, and I, I wheelie out in front so that I could drown him. <laughs> and, uh, I couldn't see so. And then when my up. front went, but then when my front tire went down, it drowned me. Yeah. It was. Did you get a bee? No, I uh, fly. Oh, you? okay. Yeah, I read a, a, a story about a Spanish MotoGP rider who had a fly inside the helmet in a MotoGP Grand Prix. And he, he had to eat the fly. He swallowed it because he couldn't lose the race. And he won the race with a tank like a, like a chameleon, like Jun. <laughs> What a terrible situation, having to deal with the circuit, the competitors, and the flies. Oh yeah, Nick, you should have eaten it. Yeah, I should have eaten it. <laughs> well, I would have done it, but it was in my ear. Oh, okay. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't have teeth in my ear. I, just, <laughs> I do. Might, you know. I got so much hair, they're kind of like that teeth in those ears. So. <laughs>
It's like a it's Venus a fly, fly trap. Yeah, Venus fly trap. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's like the Roach Motel. You may go in, but you never come out when you go in that ear, you know? <laughs> But this is pretty, right? You saw that view as we were oh, coming down? Stunning. Yeah. And also after I think it was after the after the river or before the river crossing. They were so beautiful on the left side. Oh, after yeah. the river crossing on the left side it was beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah, with that colours. Still a lot of colours. Yeah. As the day and the ride came to an end, we decided to split off at 4 p.m. so Manuel can head back on the road to the city while there is still daylight remaining. Nick and I decided to continue our ride since we trailered our bikes to location. So as soon as 4 o'clock hit, we bid farewell to Manuel, thanked him for a great ride, and wished him safety as he headed back into the city, while Nick and I headed off into the sunset to complete the ride. What dam is that called? Uh, Rayburn Dam. Yeah. No, Rabin Dam. Rabin Dam, that's it. That's beautiful. The last leg of the scenic ride was beautiful as you circumnavigate Lake Burton and see the beautiful mansions and boathouses that line the lake. There are a lot of celebrities that live off this lake, including coach of the University of Alabama football team, Coach Saban. So all good things must come to an end, and that includes this ride on a beautiful fall day. And now as I look ahead, I just hope the winter offers a few warm days for me to get out on that motorcycle and explore the mountains once again.